Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Troy Lambert, the Education Lead with Plotter, and I'm here with my partner in crime, CJ and I. Uh... Guilty as charged. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> today, we're going to talk to you about some about some of the different parts of Plotter, and today we're going to focus on characters. And so take it away, CJ, with some ways that you can create a new character. Let's start that over, shall we? So I can share my screen, because that would be smart. Okay. Yes, share your screen. All right, we won't start over 100%. Okay. Today, we're going to talk to you about characters and how they work in Plotter. So, take it away, CJ, and tell us about some ways that you can create a new character. So, the first thing you can do is hit that plus button, Troy, and it's going to bring up a whole character space profile or area where you can create your character. And the first thing I would do is name your character. If you don't know your name for your character, just say Fluffy or whatever placeholder you need that encompasses your character <laughs> beautifully. And then another thing you can do is write a short description. So maybe the type of role that they play, anything that will just help you keep track of who that character is the role they play in it. This is a murder mystery. Maybe you could say the victim. How sad for them. So something along those lines. But that's one of the first things you can do when you begin to put in all of this information for your characters. What else can we do to get all that information in there, Troy? Well, another thing we can do and another way that I use characters is there is a note section. Now, in just a minute, we're going to talk about some attributes and some templates you can add to your characters. But the very first time that I described a character in Plotter, I simply, or in my manuscript, I simply cut and paste that into Plotter here. And that way I have a description that, that I can refer to, to fluff out, to fluff out Fluffy, our character here. So we're gonna say he's an orange tabby cat and that is really fast. Okay, so that's apparently this is the kind of character that we're creating this time. The <laughs> other thing great. that you can do is add a category to this character. So maybe this is a main character, maybe it's a supporting character, but there are all kinds of characters you can create. Now, default, we have main, supporting, and other, but in this case, we've added best friend, support, victim, villain, secret crush, so we're not going to make the cat a secret crush. Maybe we'll make it just a best friend because that'll make things a little less awkward and a little easier. So what are some other things that we can add to characters? We've got a couple cool tabs here, CJ. How can we use those? Yes. Yeah, so the first one that we can look at is attributes. Something that should be noted is that you can configure. So there's a little button on the right that says configure. And so you can actually add whatever attributes you want to add. And attributes could be things like goal, motivation, primary conflict. It could be something as simple as hair color, misbelief, the lie that they believe in, whatever it is that you want to attribute to that specific character. But just know that this will also be added to any other characters, like these options to fill this stuff out. It's global. So any other characters that you create, it's also automatically going to input what you have configured for attributes. So just know that. Now, if you would rather put a paragraph in instead of a line, like if you're wordy and long-winded like I am and I need lots of detail, click that paragraph check mark and it will allow you to write a lot in that space. And then you can see that you've got all of those options there within the characters themselves. And you can, you can make notes, fill all that out, answer those questions. Some folks have their own way of doing things, their own formula for attributes. And this is kind of your way of making your own template for your characters or to add a few things if you want to. Another thing you could do instead of doing attributes and you're just, you you generally don't have any idea where to start, you can get some templates that are already pre-approved within Plotter. So you click on add template and we've got these starter templates available that will help you build out your characters by giving you little writing prompts or questions and helping you flesh that out. So when you click on one of these templates, it will actually show you what all that entails. What is the content of this particular template? Do I like it? Do I want to apply it? And if you do, then you would just select that option. If you don't, then you would just 
cancel it out and try another one. Uh, what's your favorite one to use? Do you use a lot of these templates, Troy? I do use a lot of these and I use different ones depending upon the character, which is what's really cool about templates is they only apply to this character. They are not global in the same way that attributes are. So one of them that I use all the time is the Enneagram, because especially with main characters, I like to know their Enneagram type and their core fear and their core desire. So I use the Enneagram one a lot. Now, if you if you click on some of these and you don't know much about them, like the Enneagram or Clifton Strengths, but you think it's something you might want to use in your stories, or you need a deeper explanation of it, if you click this orange button right here, it will take you actually to a web address, in this case, the Enneagram Institute, that where they describe all the different Enneagram types. And so you can get some information that will help you to fill out this template. But this is one that I select fairly often. And what I like to show you by this is that we can have more than one template for each character. So I've got their character bio, which is more about their physical characteristics, their height, their weight, maybe their religion, city of birth, education, kind of job title, some different other things about my character that I might want to know, their life goals, their fears. But I can also have the Enneagram, which is a much more specific personality typing that I may not want for every single character, but that for my main, main character helps me flesh them out as I go through the story. And if I decide I don't necessarily need this t particular character template for this character, I can simply come over here and remove that template. And it's also helpful to note that with the character bio and these long ones, I have several different fields to fill out. You can either fill them all out or don't fill them all out. You don't have to fill out every single field for this to work for you. Now, what else can we do with characters, CJ? There's these cool things over here. What is That's that right. all about? This is all about visualizing your character. So some people will upload an image of an actor or actress that encompasses what the character might look like. Other people will just get like, you know, AI art or just literally maybe they've created art, but you can upload an image that is representative of your character and what they look like. And this can sometimes be very helpful for cover designers, by the way. I love Tom Cruise. So you can do that, yeah. but you can also within the notes section, is it the notes section, Troy? You can actually yes. insert an image there if you want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, so you could add images within the notes section and then you can see Tom Cruise completely which i prefer so nicely done uh, yes and that, now that's nice to look at <laughs> we have revealed that this is also another note that we could add because clearly our main character is a tomcat so <laughs> anyway I this is this, nice. this character example is a tomcat now one of the other things that you could do in this note section is that you can add hyperlinks. So for instance, if we had an IMDb page or an image page that had a bunch of images of Tom Cruise, let's say playing a particular role that fit this particular story, then we can link to that. So we can have an IMDb page for this actor, or if you have a bunch of images saved in a Google Drive folder or a OneDrive folder, and you don't wanna add all of them to your notes section, you can link them here, and then you're just going to put the, the link here. I will just say this is IMDb. That's not going to actually work, but we're going to say it will. And then we can click on that link and go to that page. So when we're in the process of either writing or revising, and we want to look at images that we have of that character and describe them to our reader, we have the ability to do that just by adding, simply by adding hyperlinks to this note section as well. So that's another thing that we can do. And we already mentioned categories, but let's look at them in a little more detail, CJ. So you can add or change categories. How do we do that? How do we edit them and add or change them? You, you can go to the category area itself. So you would just click on the little drop down menu and you can actually take a look at what you have there. Something that's cool is that you could actually edit it and you can add more categories to it. You can rename the ones that are there because usually what is automatically set up is the word other for category. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so maybe you're writing a romance and you want to add like the best friend. And so you can make a category of this is the best friend. Usually what a lot of authors will do is here's the here's the main character or main characters supporting characters. 
but sometimes having more categories to choose from as far as this individual is this type of character or that type of character. I've seen people categorize the characters as the character arcs or character blueprints. So, for example, femme fatale or the chief or, you know, just to give them a good idea of who who falls under that type of character arc or character archetype. And so those are just fun things that you can do. And you can actually move the order of them around in the same way that you can actually move the order of attributes around, by the way. We forgot to show you that, but you can do the same thing there. And so this is kind of fun. You can delete them if you want to. If you decided, nah, I don't really like that, then you can always delete it. But this gives you a lot of leeway as far as just customizing it to fit your needs and the way you want to categorize your characters. Yeah, these categories can be exactly what you need them to be for your books. Now, sometimes there's also the option to add tags. And sometimes people add tags for different reasons. Now, because of all the different other different options that we have in Plotter, I don't use tags a whole lot. But I have seen people use tags for things like a re the relationship to the main character. So maybe this is the main character's brother. That's a lucky person to have Tom Cruise as their brother. But I think that would be kind of a fun brother to have anyway. Tom, if you're looking for a brother and you're watching this, just let me know. I'll be your brother. All right. But anyway, unlikely. But it, anyway, but if you are watching, Tom, it's great. But also I've seen them add things like what subplot they are related to. So maybe they're related to the romance subplot or the side quest or something along that line that isn't necessarily the main plot. And I just want to be able to see how that character is designated. So that is the way that I've seen people use tags or if there's more than one category that they fit in, maybe they're the best friend and they're also part of the character's family, or it's also a villain and the best friend, maybe that's kind of a betrayal story, whatever the case may be, then you can use tags to add some additional categories or whatever the case may be. Tags are really a way to add an additional layer of detail to your story or your characters. So that's kind of the way we use tags. Now, what about books, CJ? How do we add a character to another book in a series? Oh, this is a fun one. So to add more characters to books, you actually have to have more books. <laughs> so if you just have one, you could go to project up at the top and you can add more books within your your series. So and you can, you know, title them book one, book two. We get into more detail when it comes to series Bibles and creating that a little later. But this is just to quickly show you where you would create the books. OK, and then you would go back into characters and you can actually click on the little books, the plus sign next to the books, and you can choose which book this character is in. And, and maybe the character is in book one as the protagonist, but maybe they are a supporting character in book two. And so you can you can tag them and and label them based on which books they are in within the series and what role they play within the series as well. So that's kind of a book two thing. though that Tom Cruise would be my secret crush. Maybe in book one, he's the main, the main that, cat. I want to see those tags, Troy. But I want to yeah, see that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to see that happen. This is this is just a series that I have to write now. This um, is so now a, a, a bromance. I love it. It's a bromance. It's absolutely a bromance. But anyway, so this is another way to look at characters is by book. And I this is one of the tools that I absolutely love. This helps you create a series Bible even if your characters evolve from one book to the other. So in the series overall, he's a best friend. But actually in book one, he's the main character, maybe the main cat. And in book two, he's someone's secret crush. So that category can change as we go. You notice also that your short description and your notes can change with each book as well. So as the character evolves throughout each book, you can, the attributes will stay the same, the character bio and the templates will stay the same. But you can add new descriptions and new notes so that you can further define the role of that character in that particular book. So that can be really handy for you as well. So with that, everyone, that's the basics of how you use characters in Plotter. As we move through this series of kind of welcome videos and, and the basics videos, you'll see some more ways that characters fit into the other parts of Plotter. But for now, thanks for joining us for this character description. And we'll see you next time.